Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Realtor on the Roof. Today we are going to be talking about where to find cheap land in Kentucky. Hello there, I'm Stephen J.B. Davis, your land specialist and residential realtor here in Kentucky. And today we are talking about where to find cheap land in Kentucky. Uh, COVID has brought a lot of recurring themes in my professional world. And so this next installment of Realtor on the Roof, um, or season two, if you will, will be all land talk, um, purchasing, selling, flipping, and uh, perhaps one or two episodes about the management of land that you may already have. So without further ado, let's get to it. Um, you have to address three questions before you really start to look. And the first is, what do you want to use the land for? Land has many uses. We drive on it, we shop on it, we live on it, we play on it. We do all sorts of things on land. So what is your primary goal of purchasing this land once you get it? When you get it, what are you gonna use it for? And the reason why that question matters and why you need to address it is because if all you want to do is dirt bike around and I don't know, just, just have fun, um, you may find the perfect piece of property, but feel like, wow, why is this so expensive? It may be so expensive because the best use for that property, even though you love it, but the, the best use for that property in anyone else's mind is putting a house on it. And that's always going to carry a premium. Um, always. Um, likewise, if you just want to have outdoor recreation and you find, I don't know, something that can't even be built on, such as a property that's in a floodplain or a property that says, you know, we've got a conservation easement on it and you can build a house here, but it can only be so big and you can only really have a maximum of two houses and this property can never be subdivided. Those are a lot of rules. And so those rules tend to devalue the property. It doesn't make the property dirt cheap, but it makes it cheaper than a, than a, a house that's completely unencumbered with, or I'm sorry, a property that's completely unencumbered with restrictions like that. So you're, you're looking for a marriage between what you want, the best use of a property that you're interested in, and then of course the price. And so you have to answer why. And if you don't, then you may end up being frustrated finding things that you think are overpriced, but really what those those pieces of property are intended for is something that, that you don't plan to use it for. Second question that you have to think about, uh, rather that you have to answer is, where do you want the property to be? And when you answer that question, you also have to think about this principle. Location matters. Um, if your only purpose is getting a great deal, well, yes, you can probably look at lots of far east, um, several far west, and certainly a lot of counties in the south that have property that just, it feels like the deal of a lifetime. Um, what you won't get is the convenience of grocery shopping in, you know, under an hour's drive time. You will likely be far away from other people, which may matter to you. Um, but the closer you are to people, even if they're smaller towns, the more expensive that property is going to be. Perfect example, if you were to buy 20 raw acres of property in Harrodsburg or anywhere in Mercer County versus 20 acres here in Lexington slash Fayette County, those prices per acre are going to look very, very different, like worlds apart, because this is a place that has more people. It's the city. Of course, there's Louisville too, but you know, it's the city. It is, it is where people congregate. There, there's a larger con concentration of folks here. And so location is going to matter and you have to figure out location-wise what it is you value. So then there's a third question that you have to answer and you need to answer it um, along with thinking about this principle, this fact. The question is, how much land do you want? And the principle is that at least here in central Kentucky, this 10 to 20 acre range is going to carry a premium. Because let's face it, most people that talk to me, 
they want some amount of land so that they can live. But most people did not grow up as farmers. Most people did not grow up um, tending to large properties or being ranchers or anything like that. They want something manageable. They want something that looks pretty and that doesn't take a whole lot of work, um, but something that is large. When you're looking at the 10 to 20 acre range, the premium for that is because really the only use that that other question that we answered at the beginning or talked about the only use for a property that small is to put a house on it or house is the highest and best use almost immediately becomes house or development um, a farmer has no use for that small amount of space they're not going to make money running cattle on 10 acres they're not going to uh you know feed their family by harvesting corn on 15 acres they need way more space than that so really what's left is either a family lives there or several families in multiple houses live there and subdivide the property up and all of that so you're fighting two things one the fact that more and more people want that kind of lifestyle so the demand is high or at least higher than it's ever been but secondly it's just, that's that's the only purpose. The highest and best use for that amount of space is, that's really the only thing you can do with that much space is live on it. So it's going to be more expensive. Um, if you look for 10 to 20 acres in Mercer County, what you're gonna find is property listed anywhere between $4,000 and $6,000 an acre. You look for 10 to 20 acres in Fayette County, if you can even find that of raw land, you're looking at like $12,000 to start going all the way up to like eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000 an acre. Um, whereas once you start breaking into the 50, 60 to 70, and certainly beyond there, the discount is massive. Um, you will find that in Mercer County, I'm talking about Mercer County a lot because I just, I love Mercer County for some reason. I think it's one of the prettier counties here. In any case, um, in Mercer County, you will find that like once you get to that 50 acre mark, you're spending $2,200 an acre, sometimes like $1,900, $1,800, $2,500 an acre. That's a far cry from 6,000. But that's because there's so much space. Now you're talking about a whole other group of people. You're talking about people that, you know, their entire cattle operation may not be on 50 acres, but they can run cattle on 50, especially if it's close by to land they already have, that kind of thing. And it's certainly not a given that 50 acres, well, the best thing to do with that is just to build a house. There are other uses for that. Um, Likewise, in Fayette County, uh, you get to the 50, 60, 70 acre mark, and instead of things being 12,000, 15,000, $18,000 an acre, now you're talking more like 5,500 on the low end, uh, 7,500, maybe $8,500 for you know just 60 raw acres. Um, and of course, those numbers depend on where in Fayette County you're talking about. So the amount of land that you want really matters. And hopefully by now you can see the relationship between what you want to do with the land or your why, your uh, amount of land and where you want that land to be. Because they really work all together. It's not that um, you can do one and not the other, the other two. They really do work all together. So you've got to consider those three things big time before you even start. And so the last consideration you really need to make, it's less of a question and more of an awareness, if you will. And that is this idea of market times. Um, you know, you can go on Zillow. It's been on Zillow for two days. It's been on Zillow for a hundred days. It's been on Zillow for this long, this long. Um, with land, a long market time does not indicate um, something bad necessarily. Um, I would say if you saw 20 acres for sale, here in Fayette County, where land is extremely scarce, people absolutely want to be here in the thick of things. It's been on the on the market for 300 days. You might want to start wondering, you know, what's going on with that? Because you can't find land like that here. And land like that gets snapped up. Um, and so if it hasn't been snapped up in a place like Lexington, you might be able to get your hopes up. 
but there's probably another shoe to drop for why it hasn't sold and the deal that you could potentially be getting. Um, on the other hand, if you see 20 acres and it's been on the market for 60, 70, 80, 100 days in you know a much further away county, that's not atypical. Um, it is not one of those things where a seller's automatically like, oh, I guess I, I gotta take you know 40% off the price. Um, that's just not the way that the land market typically works. Um, so when you see those high market days, days on market for raw land, something that a lot of people aren't even necessarily looking for in the first place, not the way that they look for houses, it doesn't mean that you should get super, super excited quite yet about getting some massive deal on uh, on that property just because it's been on the market a long time. That's very normal. So now, where do you find it? Well, I would say if you are looking for that under 20 acre sort of deal and you're looking to buy a house, or sorry, to build a house, I say Mercer County has great value. Um, it's also so close to so many beautiful parts of Kentucky. I just, I love it. Um, but Mercer County is great. You can find a lot of stuff for, again, you know, $4,000 an acre, $5,000 an acre, um, sometimes less depending on how far out it is in Mercer County. But uh, I think you get a lot of great value there. Uh, Clark County is another cool, spot um you can find some some great properties some places that you won't find i mean if you are just if you're diehard like i gotta be super close to fayette well prepare yourself to like cough up some money like that's just what it is um and if you like jessamine county sorry you're you're probably not finding 30 acres in jessamine county for um it'll be cheaper than fayette but it's not going to be $2,500 an acre cheap or $3,000 an acre cheap. Um, same with Scott, one of the fastest growing counties here. Um, there are some interesting pockets in Franklin. If you're looking for recreational property, especially um, places that have been managed for uh, deer, uh, like QDMA managed, I guess now it's the National Deer Association, but, but places that have a lot of recreational value and depending on where you are in Franklin County, a lot of bang for your buck, I would say go there. Um, it's, there's a lot of interesting stuff, but there are lots of conservation easements there too, because that's some of the oldest, most prized land in this area. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. Very far. Uh, Woodford, probably not gonna get you very far. Um, Woodford has done a lot to sort of slow down the massive amount of development that is going on in our area. They're really doing a lot to preserve the visual look of their county and make sure that it does not get overly commercialized and just overrun with traffic. They're, re they're really being thoughtful about how their county accommodates growth um, as not to grow too fast and too thoughtlessly. So you're probably not gonna find too much bang for your buck there but every once in a while there's something that pops up that's that's pretty cool all right so with all that said i hope that helps answer those questions be aware of how the land market works and uh take a look at some of those counties um please tag someone that you think needs to hear this uh, get in touch with me if you've got some land that you would like to look at and some some guidance you want uh some land that you'd like to sell i am your guy and uh, like, share, subscribe, all that great stuff. Find me at landandhomes.co. Peace.